Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For the gifted privilege to worship. Thank you, Father. You are glorious, but not everyone can acknowledge it. For the gift of consciousness. And I missed many definitions. We have happened on that one that reveals that you are glorious. We ask that tonight our hearts will be implicated with these many colors of you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You may please be seated. We will be up to pray. Please help me make sure that this sound online is as good as I'm hearing it. Quickly, as a family, we want to appreciate everyone who had to skip one thing or the other to be with us this morning. It's something good, something pleasant that we gathered onto, and I asked the Lord that he will occasion days of that sort for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Um, can I have, where's Dami? Have you reworked it? Okay, so can you display it? Okay, you don't have it on, um, sir? Three minutes. Okay, so whenever it's ready, just display it. We want to take some time to pray. Uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 is where our burden for prayer is. Okay. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mount of God. In outlook, God does not exactly look like us. And what I mean by that is to further on the communication from Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 which reveals that man was styled after or in the image and after the likeness of God. So that in trying to fully understand that statement, you may be deceived to think that the image of God is physical. So that God has one head, and I'm not suggesting that he has multiple, and that God has two hands, or that God moves by feet. Before you get drowned in that perspective, you may also need to peep into Jesus' statement about the divine state in his discourse with the, okay, so my, let it show on this front screen. So that's three days of mercy. So, John, this is a body. This is a body. You will need to find the God of mercy. Hmm? May God show you mercy. Uh, it's only mercy that you can use to find the God of mercy. There's a school of thought that believes that you can bump into God. I believe it. But... When one of the princes among the prophets, Isaiah, was going to bring perspective to God, he said, surely thou art a God that hideth himself. It is more common to stumble on the things of God than to stumble on God. That's why the possession of the things of God does not cure a man from the abuse of those things. Are you with me? 
if what you are conscious of is the anointing and you have not met the God who anoints, you can misuse it. Prosperity is of God. The word of is ek. It means it comes out of God. But if you happened on a flow, like the Oba River now, if you join the Oba at three kilometers down the stream, you will not respect the river. Because there will be a shallowness that that river will express. I'm just using that you know, to capture metaphorically what I mean. But if you attempted to drop into the Oba under that bridge on the road, in this kind of state, you think twice. So, in trying to approach unto God, what a man first stumbles on are the things of God and it's possible to tabernacle with his things even though you don't know him. Okay, you want a, an example from scriptures. There was a certain man called Job. Meanwhile, I'll come back to where I was. On. There was a certain man called Job Job said of God, because one of the things of God is that God possesses reputation. Many people have experienced him, and in the days of their experience, they captured the experience in words, so that even if you don't know God, you will know about him. Are you with me? Job's testimony was, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ears. What he meant was that your reputation has reached me. But he said, now my eyes have seen thee. It was a privilege. The man Moses had interfaced with the speeches of God and by the speeches of God, he had been privileged to wield the potency of God. If you don't believe, you just need to do um, Egyptian history, and I believe because of the robustness of the educational system that Egypt advertised, it's believed that Egypt was the hub of civilization. So they must have captured in pictures. That's how they store history. There's a way they draw on the walls. How many of you have seen those Egyptian drawings before? Yes. They must have captured in drawings how Moses discipled their gods. So that was Moses not only knowing, not only hearing the voice of God, it was Moses also walking the works of God. Why did Moses therefore place on God a fresh demand to say, if I have found favor or found grace in your sight, show me now that glory. Manifest yourself to me. The question is, what was he experiencing? He had become a custodian of the things of God, but he wanted to also be able to testify that I've met you. And God said, you can't see my face and leave. But I'll hide you behind the place and I'll make you see. Many people have wielded such potencies and don't know him. There is an awe that comes upon you when you meet him. And my cry is that when you summarize all your encounters, one of them will be that you met God. Amen. The cure to many things we are trying to exit is meeting him. Tell you about Kualong. Yes, you'll be afraid. We were in, we were in, we were in Oweri. And I was trying, I, I think I was with Benga. My, my hotel room was on the fourth or the fifth floor. And we were going to the ground floor. Was it Oweri or Lagos? It was Oweri. And by the time the, the elevator got to the second floor, a military man wanted to join us down. So when the military man pressed, the door opened, he came in. Because of the camouflage I saw, I forgot that I was going down. I just stepped out. So he now went in. They now went down, got out, going and now came up. He now looked at me. He said, Daddy, what? I said, Emil, I saw the uniform. <laughs> I lost touch with direction. The uniform commanded compliance. And for me, compliance in that moment was interpreted, make way. A human being. The guy waited for us downstairs because he understood what happened. So when I came out, he now started laughing. Uh, when you meet God, you will respect him. That's one thing that church life is supposed to be with occasion. Meetings, meetings, meetings. 
meetings. So, we are trusting God not just to interface with the things of God, that when you go home, you can boldly say that the God of mercy is my God. They are congregational possessions of God, our God. But because you were gifted the privilege of a personalized entrance into the economy of God, you can also boast that, you, that God is your God. Oh Lord, thou art my God. Not our God, because it can be personalized. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. My fortress, my God, the one I have possessed in whom I trust. So, everybody should start finding that God because we want to own him. All right. So, my body from Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, reveals to us that I was saying to us that God does not look like you, He doesn't have one head and two hands and two legs. A, but in trying to define him, we will need human-based perspectives. And so the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone. And bread there is an attempt to summarize food. That food was designed to be a source of livelihood. But that man, even though food is necessary for his survival, was not designed to be surviving by food alone. So if all that you have as a structure for survival is food alone, it means you are not living. Are you with me? I hope to you know that these tears are existing, but they are not alive. They can't respond. The basic characteristics of a living thing are not expressible in a stone, but the stone is existing. We have more people in this earth that are existing than those who are living. Even in church, there are people who have the God life, but Christ is not living in them. It means that their faith will still be like the faith of the regular person. Are you with me? What powers you is what we use in validating your claims to being alive or not. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, what Jesus said was to give functionality to this structure, this divine structure that is called a mouth. That the mouth of God produces words and that these words do not end in informing people these words do not end in enlightenment these words actually produce utterances that make for living i know i'll be stuck here and what i mean by being stuck is that i can st i'll stay on this scripture to the end because i'll need to define what it means to live in a nutshell, one of your allocations as a believer, an allocation that is designed to sustain the living experience that you came into when you gave your life to Christ, is the Word of God. Why we need to pray is that if you come to church regularly, you will be exposed to the ministry of the Word. Are you with me? It means that on God's side, there is a possibility that you can no longer say on God's side that God did not give you what you needed to be sustained because every time we come to church, we hear him. What you may not be able to boldly say, or sorry, every time we come to church, God speaks. What we may not be able to boldly say is that every time God speaks, you hear him. Sometimes he cries, God speak to me. And when mercy answers you, God will tell you I've been speaking. You can hear me. In case someone walked to church tonight who was deaf, and then when he goes back home, somebody approaches him and says, what did you hear? 
and he uses sign language to communicate that he didn't hear anything. His inability to hear does not invalidate my labors in speaking. Are you with me? God wants to speak to us tonight. And I started speaking. For some amongst us, I have not started preaching. It means they have not embodied any truth. And I've said too many things. In the regular church, if this my little discourse for 15 minutes is what you heard as a sermon, you have been blessed. But somebody is still waiting for, when would this start preaching? If you are like that, it means that there's a hearing gap and only a cry can fill it up. You want to find any comfortable posture in the next five minutes and you want to plead with the Lord saying, let me hear you. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. No, no, don't. You come in when we are prayed for three minutes. So your time starts now. Let me hear you. Make sure you are praying to Let me hear you. In John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus introduces to us that there is an identity that makes for hearing. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. means I fellowship with them. And they follow me. My sheep hear. Lord, let me hear you. So you might want to say to him, I am your sheep. Cause me to hear you. Cause me to hear you. As we pray, God will begin to do a repair work when that sound comes up. A repair work. There are those who used to hear, who have stopped hearing whose ears will be implicated by a sound from heaven. You just pray. There are those who cannot boldly say that we hear him because your problem is discerning God's voice or separating God's voice in the midst of many spiritual sounds. God will be implanting into your heart the tool by which you can decipher amongst the noise. Help us. Tonight we ask that there will be a rush into the building. 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 A rush, a rush, a rush. Let those gates be opened and flood us with that which establishes in the clarity of divine hearing. It cannot be faith. Because the things that he speaks, no other man can. And in encouragement, he says to me, Son, hearing need not be faked because God is committed to aiding everyone who asks him. Oh, Jesus. To Hilakuta Sasai. Boetufotai Levite. So Zahatoria Tabaratu Mefenato. Bintete samai bitekito for a tanda sabake pateke tabai. Hitherto you have asked me nothing. Now ask that your joy may be full. We are going to ask tonight to a point where everyone can testify. It is possible to live by his utterances, and we insist that this day, this scripture will be fulfilled in our lives. Ah, he's here already. He's here already. Strong in the house. This day, this day, everyone that is numbered as his sheep will be able to capture his utterances. Tonight the guesswork ends. Tonight the economy that powers assumptions is arrested and we are plugged into his frequency. Oh kapata Popalia so the pilisto setua papi tevrata kapos. We did not inherit confusion. For scripture says, whithersoever thou turneth to the right or to the left, you shall hear his voice from behind.
time saying this is the way walk carrying ay akomba sori atete papota sinta brete kwa patai alete ke patwa kapapela sambe kopelama you are the restorer of that which is lost tonight let the ability to trap your own chances be recovered you are he that gives without operating and we are asking of you that there will be a release yes open yes open oh tamaba bakwa patak deskevai semi meko mate Lim somi bran skabo sambe tepai pakwa patati kapola sabu ke prestige semi pirantos sombra papos ai vita pabilos on to ai kavata palos i hear you i hear you i hear you and i follow you i hear you and i follow you we were not designed to be led only by that which we heard when we converged in isolation every one of us stumbled into a frequency by redemption and tonight i insist that my words you begin to come my own words things not lawful to be said in public things that are captured only within the framework of one to one communion i hear i hear i hear i hear i hear and tonight we stand against every deafening spirit every deafening experience that has been occasioned by sustained disobedience we plead the blood for mercy Sai kai e tote kai o aparato a vacoia teta fedita do belifico e paras fretote a testa fitatolia paru fereta bota fitano Jesus Jesus Thank you Father in Jesus name we have prayed just If you have been experiencing some difficulty in hearing the voice of God, just place your hand on your right ear. Clear hearing. Clarity of hearing. Clarity of hearing. So the impartations are going on but God will give us a sign. The sign is that it will in it will heighten intensity for five individuals. It will be overwhelming. It will be so overwhelming. Yes. Now the spirit begins to minister to your ears. It will be so overwhelming. So overwhelming. So overwhelming. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh. Yes. No confusion. No confusion. No confusion. No confusion. Yes, he works. He works. So overwhelming. So overwhelming. Wo! Rahai veru hene soila havara hotande sabibris telufiato. Yes. He will cause your ears to hear. There are two amongst us. Your ordinations is on the part of the prophetic, but spirits have deafened your ears. And tonight, to recover that ordination, he ministers to your ears. Now he connects you to the flow that establishes your ordination. He connects, he connects, he connects, he connects, he connects, he connects. Oh, yes, he connects. A people depend upon your hearing. Yeah. Hey. Hey, mo hote te te se le ha ha. We have just two minutes more. And his ministry, his ministry. Everything that was lost broke communication he's restoring. 
He said not just ears. Because I see sight in the spirit also restored for two of my brethren. In the spirit I see two eyes, two eyes. And he opens them wide. He opens them wide. He opens them wide. One of you was 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 who had your feet planted in open visions. You didn't have to sleep before you saw what no man beheld. But tonight he unlocks it. There is a desperation in God to communicate, and He gives life to every tool of communication. Ah, Oh Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for restorations. Thank you for recoveries. Thank you for impartations. Thank you because confusion no longer defines our fellowship with you. We can see clearly now. Oh. Okay, the Lord is saying to me that there is someone. I don't know who this individual is, but what I'm seeing is along this aisle. So I suppose that um, the person is either here or there. The picture I see is two hands. And God is saying that you are in doubt as to his nearness. I don't know what the situation is that you are going through. But God is saying what you crave for is not essentially a solution. You just want to know that God is with you. What he will do with these hands is to secure you in his embrace. The Lord will come to that person and it will be an anointing that establishes consciousness. I don't know who it is. But the hand begins to move towards that individual and at contact there is an embrace. There is an embrace. Holy Spirit, help me find that individual. Help me find that individual. Oh, Jesus. 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 Okay, so he locks in now. He locks in now. He locks in now. That consciousness grows. It grows. It grows. It grows. Oh! Rahante si se si vetosia. Berufi, heruto, hesevino, henania, vehistes, zuhianto sulae. It grows, it grows, oh, it grows, it grows, it grows, it grows. What, what, he, what, what he's sending to you is the consciousness that he lives. He lives, he lives, he's alive. Because he lives, I confess tomorrow. <laughs> because he believes. All fear is gone <laughs> Because I know He holds the future, future. And life is worth Just now, the living Just now, because He lives Because I know That feeling of being alone is banished. That feeling of being alone is banished. Jesus said, I am not alone. The one that sent me is with me. He has never sent and walked away. Tonight there is restored consciousness. Hey. Hey. 
Elimobruso Vilara do Ruseita e owns the future. And life is worth a living just because you so close. I believe you're holding me now in your hands. I belong. You never let me go. So close, I believe you're holding me now in your hands. I belong. You never. One more time. So close. never sent to do and has allowed to do without his help that embrace brings you into his help thank you for your word tonight we receive with thanksgiving in Jesus name we have prayed amen God bless you Romans chapter 12 I'm going to trust God to rush this um, so that we can have a lot more time to pray. Thank you, sir. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, one that is holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed, and that word means to change to the end that one can fit. Keep the scripture up. Be not conformed advertises that there is a mode into which you can be fit. But from Okay, that's, that's mathematical. Foundationally, you will not fit into that mode except you first undergo change. So the whole is a round hole and you are a square peg. Every attempt to fit into that hole is designed to end in futility. So the first thing you need to do to a square peg so that it can fit into a round hole 
is to alter its shape. Are you with me? So that um, if one of these are beautiful sisters who has taken an oath of consecration with God decides to misbehave or is caught misbehaving, it will be that she first adjusted her consecrations and it is because of adjusted consecrations that she can now fit into that new set. It also means that the wise ones amongst us will not wait until they fit into a wrong setting. Once you notice adjustments in consecration, it means that a process has begun. I don't drink. But if I start hanging around friends at the beer parlor, because part of our consecration is that there are places we'll never go to. Are you with me? I've not seen anybody drinking on the road before in my short life. Bulu, have you seen? I mean, the guy is just walking in daytime. Like people chew corn on the road. Somebody's just walking in daytime with a big green bottle and just drink. Have you seen before? Anybody you have seen? You must have gone somewhere. Uh, it, it, I, I don't doubt that it happens. But even if it happens, it has to happen within the context of a kind of place. And we need to ask you how you got there. It means that most of what, we, most of what happens around alcohol is place related. And so when you break the, the consecration of places and you begin to go there um, deceiving yourself that no, oh, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. One day, you will taste it. And then when you find out that you don't stagger, because the first taste really, if the first taste affects you, God loves you. And then he likes you. God loves everybody, but I'm not sure he likes everybody. I have scriptures. Esau, Jacob have I loved. Esau I, Esau have I, Hated. Now that it means that if love and hate mean what they really mean in that verse of scripture, huh? it means God decided to mute his reality in relating with Esau. And that means that the God that Esau knew is not the God of the Bible. That God who mutes his reality, not his activity, God can mute activity. So that a person can say, I've not experienced the power of God. But you cannot say that you have not experienced the love of God. Because love is not something that God does. Love is who he is. So for you to be able to confess that God hates you, in the real sense of the word hate, it means that God altered his state to relate with you. And a God who is that emotional is not what serving. Are you with me? So the word actually means like and likeless. Are you with me? So if there are activities, they are not state related. So God loved Esau. But in reference to his brother, he was less desired. Are you with me? So I believe that foundationally God loves everybody. But when it comes to liking, it's not everybody. Because the day somebody, some people first drew one puff of smoke, they choked and they ran. Some people's bodies gave accommodation to the first one, the second one, the third one. That's why they're hung on the habit. The Bible did not advertise that God hated Eliab. I'm stretching these things because somebody will come up now and say, ah, we will. See. Scriptures is not interpreted by, by letters. It's interpreted by spirit. And that whole Bible is built around only one thread. Just like your body is built around only one um, backbone. Are you with me? If you lose the backbone in, Bibli in biblical interpretation, your interpretations will be wrong. 
Even if you have not read a verse of scripture before, if you understand that line that draws through scriptures, you will not misinterpret the verse. You may have more meaning later, but you will not err. It is impossible for a God who is love not to love. So that even when the world was misaligned, the Bible says God so loved it. He didn't just love it, it was so. It means he intensified the reach of his state. But in dealings of God, I've seen that God likes some people. So David said when he pleased the Lord to choose a king for his people. He chose my father's house. And in the midst of my brethren, he chose me because he liked me. That was the ground that David perceived of his choice. And he was a prophet by excellence. So it means that God, the choice of God on people's lives sometimes is not built into how well you labeled. He just likes people. I believe that God likes people. And I'm not saying he likes you less. But when you miss a penalty, I eventually score. What you do is, and then you walk. May God give you understanding. Uh -huh. So it means whatever I want to say, I'm not part of it. I just walk. All right. Be not conformed. There will be invitations to adjust your state. And you may not be conscious because you are not being fit into the whole yet. It's just adjusted state. That the line is shifting, the line is shifting. You cannot say you are falling into the pit, but the lines are no longer as clearly drawn as they used to be. It's now fainting. Be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. And the word transformation has to do with experiencing change. Many times it is used in positive terms. Am I right? Changed. A change that optimizes, a change that gives greater advantage. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be gifted greater advantage. Be postured for more profitability. Be post, become postured for more functionality. Optimized existence. And it happens by the renewal of your mind. Actually, the concept of renewal is built around changing and exchange. That's what it actually is. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. That word in Isaiah 40, 30 is exchange. It means they will take your weakness, which you call strength, and they'll give you another one. So the renewal of the mind is the advertisement of an exchange system. Where we totally congregate, where we congregate in totality, your perspectives, your schools of thought, your mindsets, and we remove and we replace. So when you look deep, the Bible says that when this is accomplished, we will be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I decided to build some labors around the word proof. I'm just doing foundational work. Then I will not join. So I decided to check out the word proof. And I hope I still have it. It's... Um, a word in Greek that is called doki mazo. Proof there means to recognize as genuine after careful examination. That ye may be able to recognize as genuine after carefully imagine after careful examination. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? It means that a renewed mind is a tool of discernment. Are you with me? 
If I sing, now when I sang the other time, did I sing well? Do I sing well? Not like John, not like Mr. Believe, but I shall try. <laughs> Believe, I'm trying small, small now. Okay. It says small, small. Is that not what it says? But small, small is still okay. Okay, so in your mind, I sang well. But if I invite you and I ask you to tell us why you think, okay, give me a microphone. Are you good for this? Or you, you want it to pass? You are okay. Ah, good. But well, you tell us your name so that you know. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Pastor. So, what's your name, sir? My name is Ade Wole Fevo. Ade Wole Fevo, sir. Ade Wole, no, your name. Your, not your name. Fevo. Fevo. Yes, what, what level now? 300 levels, sir. Okay, what are you studying? Plan apply biology. Okay, good. So, you are studying a living thing. That's good. Why do you think, in your mind, did I sing well? Yes, sir. Okay, tell us why. Give us your parameters. Are you a music person? No, sir. But you used to listen to songs? Yes, sir. Okay, so what are the definitions of good singing? Um, it must be aligned with um, the, um, the sand. Like, okay. it must not be in off sand. The okay. um, sand in okay. one direction, the... Um, song leader picking from another key. Right? Okay, so key alignment? Yes, sir. Is that okay, Abby? Okay. Um, also, is it beat? Is it, do you call them beats? Or, eh? Like the time, time signature. Okay. So the time signature is also aligned. Okay, good. What else? Then, um, Probably when you want to switch from one song to another, it must be like it must be in that same. Um, and this brother is not in the choir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so the transition must be seamless. Yes, yes sir. not like they now need to like Timo used to do. He will he will roll roughly and then balance. Okay, you do have any other things? Well, this this is good enough. So let's let's celebrate. It. Let's celebrate it. Unfortunately, his score is zero. And the reason why I favor that your score is zero is that if you this you will pass as a judge at Nanjina Idol, is that this fear of my sinking is spiritual, and none of your definitions captures the reality of a spirit. If they had given you an F, they would have been they would have been unkind. They should have given you like an X or a Z. Uh, yeah, because I know you can take it. That's why I'm saying it. If not, you know, some people will be crying. But, yeah. but I'm, I'm trying to say that you will. You know, I asked the question. I said, "Why is he not in the choir?" Because he knows quite. Maybe some people in the choir I don't even know what time signature is. What's the definition of time signature? Let's not start that thing. Some people are singing because they can sing. So, Nigeria Idol, Next Gospel Star, Project Fame, you'll be good. But you'll find out that many of those who know these things that you know may not have a place here. So, this fear of expression is what gives you the tools of discernment. Ha! Huh? Jesus, help me. I don't know. My, my teachings, I mean, the things God is teaching me now, I need to be... Because, maybe in this, my second sermon, they, on this podium you can see me, but they can also see me. It means that this podium is two realms. Are you with me? I'll show you that when I do my second teaching. This is a two realm place. And the temple is supposed to accommodate, broadly speaking, two offices. The offices of men and the offices of angels. That's how a true temple is. 
But you see, the true judgment of a priest is not on the side of men. So, you can have a bad voice and you will still be acknowledged by spirits. Have you followed masquerade before? Okay. How many of you have followed masquerade before? Before, Jesus, before you got serious with Jesus? Okay. Uh, did you follow or carry? Okay, just follow. Okay. The people who sing to a masquerade don't need to know anything about music. Their rough voices will still occasion the reality. Are you with me? They don't need, the drummer can be leading, boogoo, 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 boogoo. the guy can be dancing out of beat. It will still capture the reality of the spirit. Where we used to live at home before, they used to pass in front of our house. So sometimes the guy's voice is even bad. And, and the, after a while, your friend Peter, who did not go to school of how to disappear, you will just disappear and appear behind everybody. What moved him into that state was the sound that this man with a strange voice was generating. No knowledge of time signatures. Transition from to song to song zero. What was the other thing? Key followership. Non-existent. But spirits love it that way. He knows the way I walk. This is the part I trod. But the Spirit is all over me. And it's guiding me safely in the way. Is that a good voice? Don't <laughs> ask yourself. <laughs> but Baba will still route energy. That's how it works. It means that the things that we score here, they, they have no relevance in the realm where things really matter. Until you shift in your mind, you cannot know a good song. There's a minister in our nation who says terrible things. And when he has accomplished saying his terrible things, he'll say, I'm preaching good. <laughs> Every time he cancels a verse of scripture, the next thing he will say is, I'm preaching good. And his people will shout. The problem is that they have been retained in a dimension. And in that dimension, the tools for discerning accurate doctrine are lost. That you left home and came to church does not mean that you moved. Hi. Wait. When you were in primary school, all of us wore the same uniform. Abi? I went to that Baptist Medical, it used to be Baptist Medical Center Staff School. It's now Bowen Teaching Hospital Staff School. I was the first set of the school. We used to wear check. You know what check is? Purple check and purple shorts. We now went to match in the stadium, this Shawun Stadium. We now saw that, ah, another public school is wearing our uniform. So they, we now go back. The next time they now change our uniform. We now start wearing brown and black. If you see us coming in drones, you think that we are mechanic apprentices going somewhere. So our parents now complain that we, 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 they don't want that uniform again. Who went to that school? Okay, what are they wearing now? Is it check again? Okay, one purple trouser and but uh, more like lilac and purple. Uh, that that was our third uniform. So at a time in the school, there were three uniforms. <laughs> Everybody stopped where his parents could afford. Are you with me? Uh -huh. me? I think my sister wore that lilac. Me, I stayed with brown. Because she had not bought the brown before we now switched. Everything happened in about one, one session. But now if you go to that school, whether you're in primary one or primary six, do they have primary six there? It stopped at five. Okay, still the same thing. Whether you're one or five, all of you wear the same uniform. That uniform is representative of a dimension of existence. But within that dimension, there are levels. So you can say, 
I pass you. But we're in the same school. It's like 100 level and 500 level. The 500 level guy, if he's studious, knows more than the 100 level person. It means he can do more with the knowledge that is passed from a university than the 100 level person, but they are in the university together. Both of them share a common identity called undergraduates. Same dimension, different levels. So I'm saying that the fact that a man left home and came to church, it might be a level change and not a dimensional change. So the way he, one level may be street life, another level may be school life, another level may be church life. All of them can be in the same dimension. So you find out that whether it's on the street or in the class or in the church, he thinks the same. The fact that he's in church may just give him some certain advantages. But people, those people can grow into what he is. You cannot grow into the reality of a dimension that you have not entered. Paul is saying to us and the church needs to hear this. That even though you are one of us brethren. <clears throat> if you have not truly switched your dimension of existence. Now, if you have not embraced a higher kind of thought process, you will not differ from the guy who is outside. After 10 years, you will come back to say prayer does not work. That's what the guy on the street believes. That's why he's living the way he's living. You will come back and say, God is a scam. You will come back and say, let us return back to the gods of iron and gods of wood. You will be in church and after 15 years, you saw something on X and then you will join them to say that truly, Christianity is the religion of the white man. You don't want to be enslaved, but you are going back to your, your old national anthem. Be not conformed. There is a mold, and the fact that you are saved does not mean that that mold has gone extinct. It's still waiting for those who will yield to it. And the way it brings believers back into that old mode is that it adjusts them, adjusts them gradually, gradually, gradually until they can slide in and then they fit. The only way to win the battle against that adjustment is that you are proactive. If you sit on the fence, after a while you'll be conformed. You must consciously act against it. And that's how spiritual things are. You can't win a battle by being idle. You need to consciously act against the direction that you are being talked onto. For thou lovest righteousness and hated iniquity. The average believer loves righteousness but has no distaste for iniquity. So ultimately he finds himself in iniquity. To every action, there is an... So, because you love God, be conscious that the way to sustain your love for God is to hate your, the adversary. If you do not yield to the invitation to come into a place where your total mind works is exchanged, you will not be able to discern what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Marry a fine wife is good. And we are blessed with fine sisters in this house. Have you? Okay, you know. So with the bass you are playing, you still see people. Okay. It's good. So, marry a fine sister. But not every fine sister is good for you. Because that word fine is ephemeral. It's an earthly definition of a lady. Spirits don't understand it. I have seen very fine young ladies marry very ugly men. And they are wondering how they met. Oh God, what did you say? Chris Evans said that he could not marry himself. So he believed that maybe when he spoke, he charmed his wife. That's what he believed. Ah, he was preaching, looked at his wife and said, Kai, how did I even marry you? 
Say, now, nah, Juju, Juju. Maybe there was something I said that just transfixed you. We've seen very nice looking young men to have married ladies who are less. May God give you understanding. But you find out that some of those combinations still advance the cause of God in destiny. It means that what you call a downside is not known. I'm trying to domesticate what I am teaching so that when I pull it into service, you understand. Say, no, I want my daughters to be fine and this sister is not fine. You can even close your eyes and see what a baby girl will look like. Put the head of the sister there. You feel it. If you choose like that, it's because you belong to a dimension of existence. The invitation is come into a new one. And the path to come into a new one is that we exchange your persuasions, your perspectives, your schools of thought, your mindset. Everything requires a total overhaul. As a matter of fact, that's the reason why you come to church. If church is not changing how you think, how you perceive things, is not changing the schools of thought that you have yielded to, then that church is not a church. No matter how good you are when you come to church, church itself is potentiated to all time. So if you are not changing and you have been coming here, Look for another place. I'm withdrawing my invitation from you. That's the design. If not, you can be in church for 50 years. See what happened a few years ago, Pastor Diola. P people 60, 70 who were born as, as into Christian families heard a man say that Titan is a scam. They have tightened for 40 years, some of them. And now they believe that they are not supposed to tight. It means they don't have the tools after 40 years plus of being in church to discern what is that good, perfect, uh, sorry, acceptable and perfect will of God. They still cannot discern it. The noise now is around chanting. The man who started the noise has even suffered out. But some people have found scriptures to defend something that does not need a defense. So if I'm singing, wonderful, marvelous are the works of your hand. Ready is your name. And wonderful, marvelous at the works of your hands ready is your name oh 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 yeah.
can you recognize this spirit? That's where, the, that's where this battle is. Can you recognize this spirit? How is it that you can know that an evil spirit is being roused, but you can't pick the Holy Ghost? Ah. Sometimes silence makes us assume that you know. Speech sometimes betrays our perspective of you. And I'm saying tonight that potency sometimes does not advertise that you know. Well, hmm. let me say this is side talk. Some if you talk, if you think that every issue in the body of Christ you are called to address, very soon you will be airing. Are you with me? That everything, everything, you now you live your life on X. And everything that is said, you think you must talk. Remember that those who are silent are not afraid to talk. But God does not always talk. Are you with me? Where is Okiki? I read something that you wrote on this thing and I was excited. There was a way you ended it. You spoke about the how things are communicated. Are you with me? Let me say this boldly. If the way you communicate doctrinal correction, behavioral correction is wrong, then we should also suspect what you are saying. That you are not always right. The lack of the accurate tools to communicate the way Jesus will have communicated means that it's possible that even the things you have said are fallible. I know if I start this fight that I'm about to start, it will end up as an internal war. May God give you understanding. But I will fight it very soon. You cannot know Jesus and talk in a way that Jesus will never talk. No. The Bible said he brought no railing word against anyone. How can you be representing a, the Lord in a way that is not like the Lord? Those of us who are not looking for anything, these are the ones that can fight this battle. If you are looking for something, you keep quiet. I have zero tolerance for error. But I know that God bears with people. Are you with me? If we pray more for people, there will be less erring. But you can't be praying for me and be fighting me. That's the truth. When have we called a meeting to say for everyone who is teaching inaccurately, can we pray for them? When we pray for them, they will not stop. It's that of that prayer, we show God that we are interested and then we'll be given the right tools. The problem is, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, many young people have gotten into trouble with God because many men of God did not speak well. Are you with me? So, many young people have broken ranks in the spirit because people program them. They probe them to break ranks. I saw a young lady say to a minister yesterday, that's a, uh, sorry, but you are talking like a man who does not have a sound mind. I, I, I showed him. I went to my wife. I said, see, this is, now we are, we are destroying a generation because we will not talk like Jesus, even though we have something to say. You are talking like somebody who does not have a sound mind. You should be ashamed at yourself. So if God sent me to you, 
and I am received that way, can the things, the ministry in me get to you? Have I not with uncultured utterances closed the gate of ministry to people? There are schools in the spirit so that where we can reacquire the, the way to speak. God is grieving. If you are wrong, let's tell you you are wrong. Did Jesus not speak in a way to the Pharisees? But all this is infantile. I tell you, I'm wondering how people study, how they pray, how they prepare for meetings. Because sometimes you see five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Some people even bam, 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 bam. How do you have the time? If I've read my Bible, I can keep preaching, I can keep preaching. Yes, but there are burdens of God that can no longer be stewarded. Because if you have a walk with God, you will know that time is one of the prices that men pay to touch him. We can have words, but we begin to lose out life when we don't spend time with him. Please, AWCN, don't be part of that thing. If God gives you a word, say it. But I know that when God sends men, he doesn't only tell them what to say. There is a how to speak. I was sharing with Reverend Austin yesterday morning. Maybe I should tell you. I'm about see this thing, see this thing, see this thing. And then I raised the issue of my brother, P. Daniel. Mute this.
So Paul could say, I finished my course because what that relationship was supposed to do, he still did. Be careful. Satan is sharp too. It's not about money that is made on Twitter. Say me, they used to make money on Twitter too now. Do, do that, does that banter generate money? No. No. No, it does generate money. You said? A lot of money. Oh, so is it in financial? Okay, so you can just come up with a controversial thing. Let's continue. But you can be making money and not know. Okay. Maybe that's why somebody will just wake up one day and say, Jesus is not even Lord. Then people will now start. Okay. Uh, Pastor, that what I've been doing all these years? Am I back on now? So my burden is this invitation into another dimension. In the way it, in the way it relates to, uh, in, in, in reference to, how do I put it now? In that same way in which it relates to how we share with each other, how we perceive other people. When it comes to the service of God, I was trying to establish yesterday that it is possible that you are brought into a new place and you are still functioning with the mindsets of the old place. The story once was said about a man who was invited to a dinner of very wealthy people. Because it was winter, everybody came with an overcoat. And because this man was wealthy, his overcoat was one very wealthy. But he didn't have a son. The arrangement of the dinner was that everyone came with their hair to his business. So what he did was that he picked one of his servants and gifted the servants an expensive overcoat to accompany him to the dinner. They arrived and the, once you come in, you remove your top coat and then you put it on the hanger. So everybody chose the hanger. There was a fireplace with live coals burning. And then this servant took the overcoat and there was nowhere you could hang it in his mind except over the fireplace. Gradually, the fire began to feel the texture of the overcoat from underneath. And the man looked back, seeing the expensive overcoat, said, Which servant hung something here? He was a son, but there was a mindset that servants had. And even though, I mean he was a servant, he was brought in as a son, but he still acted like the servant that he is. When you labor or serve men, your service could be emotional. Today I don't like him, so I'm not going to do a good job. I don't feel he's treating me well, so I'm going to be inconsistent with my labors. But when you come into the kingdom of God, you must understand the constancy of God. It's like in a marriage. The covenant in marriage is stronger than how you are treated in marriage. Is that me hearing? The covenant is stronger than how you are treated. And so if you, if you have altercations with your wife in the night, you now wake up in the morning and then something you have promised to do, you now say that you will not do it. And then she says, why are you not doing it? Because of what you did yesterday night. It means you don't understand covenant. Because covenant takes away the, such words like because of. Service here is distinctively different. But to be able to plug in, you will need to understand the strength of the world into luring you into their own system. 
And in case you have fallen for the world before, when you come to this side, you need to be upright. Somebody steals from church money. And then you now ask him why. He says they are not helping us. That they are not helping you does not give you a ground to steal. Maybe you labor, you work somewhere. How do they, they pay? Nigeria runs a, an end of the month payment system. There are countries where they do monthly. Some they do weekly. Some they do fortnightly. Am I right? Now, when you come into the kingdom, at the end of the month, you can't stop work because you were not paid. I mean because God did not reward you. Because due seasons in the kingdom are not numbered the way it is numbered where you came from. So you can labor in the kingdom and in three years, nothing appears in your life that looks like you are laboring. You must, your eyes must be fixated on the labor and your heart open that when my time comes, it will be my time. Is somebody with me? If somebody sees you laboring without struggle and comes to you and says, why are you that way? You will need to draw from scripture. And I'm, in this, I'm trying to advertise to you that the way to be transformed, which is a byproduct of the renewal of the mind, is to begin to intercourse with the scripts that God has given to us as scriptures. One of my scriptures to be able to tell someone I don't need to be bothered the Bible says for God is not unrighteous to forget your lab, your work and your labor of love which you have done unto his name so that when you work for someone and after 30 days he says hey, we'll pay you next month you can quit but if you don't get a reward at the end of the month from God, you can't quit because he has been advertised to be one who is not unrighteous. He can't forget. So my consolation will be, it just means my time has not come. And somebody say, what if the enemy is wrestling with you? You have the two to differentiate between delay and wrong time. Because you can judge the will. A mind shift. Be not. Be not. It's a fight. But you must set yourself to it. Be not conformed to this world. Labor not to be defined by this world. Enter into another dimension. In that new dimension, we master it in levels. To every dimension is cut out in levels. So there are some things that Pastor Yomi may be able to do in this new place with the same scriptures. I mean, living experiences that I may not be able to do yet. Probably there's a level that he, he is in and have not come into. But Keep your feet in the place. Keep intercoursing with the word. Keep intercoursing with the word. And then your mind is changing. Your mind is changing. And progressively, you can do business with what is available in that new place. That's the admonition. Now, when people come with words to try and, to try and cut you off from what is available in this new place, you, you don't need to shout. You just whisper to them, not so. Not so. You show up as a leader in the kingdom. It can be unit leadership, it can be church leadership, it can be regional leadership because some of you may become regional pastors. You can be national pastors or something. There are even some geos here, like Pastor Prince now, he's a geo. Be... Uh -huh. So I'm saying that even in relating, the Bible says that the rulers of this world, they lord it. They lord, they lord 
over their subjects. But the Bible says that in the kingdom it is not so. Remember what we learned during church family. It means that everyone that we relate with is a brother, is a sister. Church or kingdom leadership is not Lord and subjects. It's brethren. So there are certain strains of interaction that may not come. Somebody was complaining about our pastor recently. I've not even... Well, okay, yes, I've spoken to him. Because I was about to make another decision and I had to checkmate. I've spoken to him. She said, I don't like our pastor. I said, why? That sometimes when he's angry, he used to even slap us. Ah. But imagine that I slap you. What will you even do, sir? You not come again. Or you just say, he's a man. Or you just slap your own back. I first thought that David will play something and I will say, ah. I mean, you can't slap like this. The hand must first go back. In covering that distance, there is no consciousness. If somebody does that in church, the problem will not be that you are wicked. It will be that your mind has not been schooled. And so we need to check what you are listening to. Even me. I've kept my son before, as small as he is. But I used to cry. When I turn away. Because there's a way. When you say bring your hand. He does it with boldness as though. You won't dare. And then when the small cane lands on his hand. I've seen him do it twice. There's a way he fixes his gaze on your eyes. It's like trying to look into your soul to say. It is me. Oh. <laughs> Nations. So. I will now start storytelling. You know I'm not happy that and you're making me do this thing. Do what I told you to do now. So I have to summonize him. I've done it like three times. Three times. And all the times I became sorrowful because I saw that what I wanted him to do, he had difficulty doing it. And God had to speak to me to say, he has difficulty. Do this thing and help him. And immediately I helped. He overcame the difficulty, got it done. That's within a context where caning your children is allowed. So some people came late now. We now say, come forward. We now lie them here. Some of these things may be extreme examples, but they are real examples. I come to church and I decide I don't want to walk. And I tell you people to kneel down and I'm walking on your backs. The problem is that the mind is not renewed. Because the rule there is that the way to show that you are in charge is that you should lord it. Make people feel the weight of your superiority over them. But in the kingdom, it is not so. The pursuit, when you become visible in the world, is that you, you become great. You become successful. Are you with me? On this side, visibility is a responsibility. It's not an end. It's a weight that comes upon you because it means that now you have been gifted a platform to represent him. Are you with me? However, when you come into the kingdom and God gives you visibility, you will be tempted. We're sharing something this afternoon. You will be tempted to use a God platform in a way that men outside there use human platforms. You will need to rebel against those communications by saying not so. I will not. All of us are gifted. How many of you know that? For unto everyone is giving grace according to the measure 
of Jesus Christ, of the gift of Christ. Everyone. Somebody say everyone. 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 So everyone under the sound of my voice is gifted. Some people have not labored in partnership with the Holy Spirit to steer that gift into very intensified expression. So they may be telling themselves, God didn't give me anything. At least everybody has one gift. At least. The parable of the talents teaches it. Some people have more, but there is nobody who can say, I do not have. In the day of your greatest expression, there will be the temptation to use the gift to gift yourself a place. So you walk into a building and you look like everybody. But now you have that eye in the spirit. And when you look a little, you speak in tongues, sigh, 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 sigh. All of us have this finger. I don't know what, why we always point it. You say, sir, you have three children. I know you don't have, so I just had to. You have three children. The second, the name of the second one is Jane. You say yes. So, 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 and so, 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 and so, so, and so, yes. Okay, let's see after service. Sometimes those sites are not for that communication. It's that you have used your state, your gift to all that person. And so you can press into a demand. There are, more, there are, there are even more modern ways. That, that's a very crude way to obtain money. Because now you have been established in, you have a merchant in the world of knowledge. You can do a seminar. How to operate in the world of knowledge. You didn't learn it, you were gifted. Are you with me? Seminar fee, 50,000. And that's cheap. In Nigeria now, people charge in USD. To bring people into something that they didn't even know when they entered it. Be not. Because in the world, anything you possess, what you do is to labor to increase its value. Or to gain from its value. In the kingdom, it's the king who gains. And if it pleases him, you are also brought into profit. If not, pleasing him is enough. Are you with me? When you serve in the kingdom, the things you have done become trophies. I remember Nigeria once had them. Who's this lady in Navdak that has died? Dora Quinley. She's late now. If you look at the wall of her office, you see plaques. Because that lady damaged the drug, the, the illicit drug market in Nigeria. So she had global awards. You will barely see the color of the wall. Everything is an award. In the kingdom, you don't hang them. You lay them down. Are you with me? But in the day you begin to gather them in the kingdom too, you will be tempted to lift them. You will need not to be conformed to this world. You will rather choose to embrace a new dimension by a renewed mind. That's the invitation that God is giving us. It's not difficult. If you stay in these words, they were not just written as letters, they are infused with a potency to alter how you think. When you were born, you were born blank. The things you know were the things you interacted with. If you've never heard witch before, it will be difficult for you to, to believe that witchcraft exists. Are you with me? Nobody was born with the consciousness that Jesus is Lord. You were taught, you apprehended this that's truth, and the life in that truth implicated you. That's why you believe. That's why it's, even pos it's impossible to come into the kingdom of God without the ministry of a preacher. They can't believe if nobody preaches to them. And there can be no preacher except God sends men. 
But I've been like this all my life. You can change. The Bible says, um, how did, what's Proverbs 18.1? True desire, that's the word I want. True desire. A man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. There are interpretations that show that this wisdom that is mingling with is not, is, is, that is dark wisdom. Are you with me? But I'm saying that the principle can be embodied. Desire. I want to think like the kingdom. I want to do things like the kingdom. And doing things as is required in the kingdom begins with thinking in the kingdom way. For as a man thinketh, so he is. If we cannot affect your mind, we cannot produce change in you. So there's an invitation to embrace a new dimension. There are higher thoughts. Higher thoughts. And when I use the word higher thoughts, I'm not speaking of something esoteric. I'm not speaking of um, all, this, all this diabolic dimensional thing. God introduced the shape of his thoughts to be superior to our thoughts. That's Isaiah 55. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. It's God saying to us, I dimensionally we are separated. And so you will need to come up so that you can function in a way that pleases me. You will still sing, you will still lead prayers, you will still preach, you will still lead but with a changed mindset. That's what my first, this is my first chart. The second one is a lot of storytelling from scriptures. This is what this chart is about. Help me change. Help me say yes to your invitation. And say no to temptations. You want to bow down your head and speak to the Lord. I heard a call that I shall come. So I come into your house. There is a place where he dwells. That place is defined by mindsets, defined by a shape of perceptions, defined by a kind of reality that cannot be found outside. Only those who make their way in can embody what is advertised there. But the open ticket. He opens the gate. He flings it open by not just gifting us his word. Tonight he gives affinity for his word. I heard a call that I should come. So I go.
that he's rewarding seekers. He's rewarding seekers. Jerry. He's rewarding seekers. For I will seek you in the morning. 